Welcome back to Live With, brought to you by Species Nutrition. Visit speciesnutrition.com. I'm Dave Palumbo, and today's episode is a special one. It's a controversial one. We all heard the term synthol in the bodybuilding world. Some people think it's the greatest gift to the industry. Some think it's the worst curse. And this past week, last weekend specifically, uh, there was a show in Canada, and one of the bodybuilders on stage had uh, a picture appeared on the internet of him, and it kind of went viral. Uh, we have the, the picture. I'm sure Johnny will put it up in a little bit. Uh, and it uh, shows a distorted-looking shoulders on both, uh, you know, the deltoid muscles on both sides of this particular competitor. And people were screaming, outrage, synthol, synthol, look at this, look how horrible this is. And this person took a, a huge beating on social media, more so maybe than anyone in the history of, of social media beatings. And I only felt that it was fair to hear his side of the story. And so I tracked him down, he contacted me, his name's Kenny O'Neill. He's been competing for quite a number of years and he was nice enough to agree to come on the show. So it's with my pleasure to welcome Kenny O'Neill. Hey, what's up, Dave? Thanks for having me, man. You know, you're a good sport, I gotta tell you, because, look, over the years, no one has been praised and bashed more than myself. So I know how it is sometimes when people, you know, get on a, on a tangent going after you. It doesn't bother me, it doesn't seem like it bothers you too much, but, you know, you agreed to appear on the show, so I assume you want to talk about the incident and, and what exactly went on, because... Um, We'll put the pictures up, but obviously something was seriously wrong uh, with both deltoid muscles at this particular show. Yeah, that's that's for sure. Uh, for years, Dave. For years, not just recently, but for years, people have been saying I've been you know using synth on my shoulders because my shoulders are beyond dominant for the rest of my body. And anyway, so like I'm a bodybuilder, and I'm not afraid to talk about drug use and that kind of thing. And I never pinned my my medial delts because they're just too big. Okay, so last last year I competed at the uh, the BC Championships and I won the heavyweight class. Okay, I decided to drop oil late oil like the oil based testosterone injections and switch to water based, and with extreme success it worked. Okay, so I dried out, had a nice look. Deltoids look good, you know. They weren't sit doll looking or anything like that, and this year. I, you know, this year I really wanted to make a big splash. This year I wanted to go pro, man, straight up. I'm supposed to compete at the uh, CBBF Nationals this, this weekend. That's not going to happen. I'm going to take a little bit of time off. But, um, yeah, so this year was special. So I worked out from January 1st to day, uh, two days before the show, two, three-hour sessions in the gym a day. I did legs and cardio in the morning. And I did an upper body part and cardio at night every day, six days a week for six months. I put on 20 pounds of muscle. I, get, I came in 20 pounds heavier on the scales this year. And on, uh, I had a shitty break about three weeks before the show. I switched to water based again. The same product. Not going to mention what it was. It worked for me last year. Um, but my medial delts is a place that's fresh. Never go in there because my delts are so big. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to fire all my delts. I haven't gotten my delts in a year, maybe since the last show. Um, I'm going to fire the water-based water windstrel and the water-based testosterone in my shoulders. And it was amazing because it was so fresh. It was just like, wow, bam, bam, bam. I was just going in. I was picking spots. I wasn't going in the same spot every time. Uh, I'm pretty good with that stuff. But anyway... Um, my left shoulder acted up first and got really warm and red like like a normal uh, infection would. And the next day, my right shoulder literally grew another shoulder. Uh, so simultaneously, both of my shoulders got infected with, with the water-based drugs. So my first move was to go to the naturopath, and I really trust her because she's, <clears throat> she's, she has no prejudice. You go to a medical doctor sometimes, and you know, second, hold on, let me stop you. I got to get the timeline now. When, when did you first notice that these, uh, these body parts were getting infected? How far out from the show were you at this point? About three weeks out. Three weeks. Okay. okay. Yeah. Now, most people would go to the doctor and, and, and get some antibiotics. What, why didn't you take that route? And that's the route I should have taken, Dave. Uh, <laughs> my best friend, who I trust more than anything in the world, he told me to do that. But then I called my naturopath. The, uh, she helped me tremendously last year with uh, keeping my energy levels great. She, 
she said, come in and see her. She drained my shoulders, and then she gave me this uh, special ozonated uh, olive oil to rub on the shoulders. And you know what? The shoulders went down, and the shoulders looked fine. The shoulders came down, and they looked normal. So uh, I'm at the weigh-in, and this is not a word of lie. It was Friday at the friggin' weigh-in, Dave. My whole right arm, from my elbow uh, to the top of my shoulder, it, 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 it exploded. And, I, and what I'm thinking is the, the water. You said it exploded? What is it? Well, you know, it exploded in size. It actually oh, exploded. Okay. But it, it like doubled in size. My bicep, I had, I had striated bicep. That was gone. It looked like flat. And my shoulder just really just got swollen. This was at the weigh-in, man. Worst timing ever. Anyway, so <clears throat> uh, at that point, I was kicking myself, saying I should have went and got antibiotics, obviously. But I didn't have any time left. So I went home, massaged, massaged the shoulders out. They came down a bit. And I'm thinking that the, you know, the phase where the water comes out, Dave, you know, we take water out, right, like, to, get, to get shredded for a show. I think when that happened... Is, is when my body reacted, my, the infection that was inside me uh, reacted like to, to the water being gone or something. That's the only thing I can figure out. Anyway, so I'm posing home. It looks a bit off. It looks a bit off. To me, I knew it wasn't perfect. I went into the morning show. I felt confident I was going to win the show. No, I didn't, I didn't, like that, that was my, my confidence levels. I was like, I'm going to go in and win the show. I was twice as big as everybody else. My condition was good. After the morning show, I seen pictures on the internet. I was sitting down backstage and my heart broke in half. And I didn't give a shit what people thought about me online. All I could think about was, man, the hardest six months of your life you just put in and your shoulders look deformed. And that's all I thought about. I didn't think about who was going to say shit or fucking what bullshit I was going to come up online on social media because monkey see, monkey do. Everybody's going to shit on me. The people who know me, they support me, man. I got I got inbox messages from all over states and Canada um, and even different parts of the world. People sympathize with me because they've been through this shit. My unfortunate was the timing, man. And I got two infections simultaneously in, in the my most dominant body part, and yes, it looked ridiculous, but I didn't know it looked ridiculous until I saw the pictures after the morning show. Look ridiculous. You obviously just didn't didn't see the ridiculousness of it, maybe because you were so focused on wanting to win this show, but I mean, you got to have friends, right? I mean, my if, if I looked like that or if I saw a friend of mine who had a deformed-looking show like that, and it, look, it has happened to a lot of people. You're not the only one this has happened to. The difference is these people didn't go on stage with it, and I think that's what happened. Now with, with social media, everyone's got a camera. Everyone's, you know, will take 400 different angles of that of that of those shoulders, and it looked really bad. Why didn't anyone who was around you say, hey, Kenny, don't go on stage with this? Well, I guess it's because the guys that were around me watching me pause and stuff were just uh, either afraid to tell me or they respected me too much and they knew how hard I worked, man. And, you know, it wasn't until the, the morning show that, you know, I, I, I was backstage, I was getting looks, man, and I was getting people saying stuff like, man, your delts are awesome and this and that. Nobody was laughing at me or anything like that, but I was getting some weird looks. And the three guys that were watching me pose the last few weeks, I guess they just didn't have them to tell me, you know what, Kenny, maybe you should do the show. You know, maybe you should, maybe you should get some antibiotics, don't do this show, and then go to the Nationals and see if you win the Super Heavyweight Class at Nationals. But you know what, David, I don't regret it because without failure, there's no success, right? And I've already succeeded multiple times in bodybuilding. So now I've failed. And, you know, greatly. And my return is going to be triumphant. I, I can promise you that. What happens now? You get off stage. You see what's happened. Obviously, you got some massive infections. I'm sure once you start eating and drinking the next couple of days, it probably looks worse. What do you do? I mean, what are you doing right now? Are you on antibiotics? Did you have to get these things drained? Yeah, actually, I went to the doctor uh, a little over a week ago, a medical doctor. Uh, you know, he was, he was a typical medical doctor. I told him what happened, and he was, like, you know, frowning upon me or whatever. But anyway, he, he decided to drain... The right shoulder, which was ridiculous, this right shoulder here looked like it had a bag of milk on it. 
And the thing, the horn people were talking about on my left shoulder was simply just a pocket that's right here, right here, and it's like it's a pocket of Winstrol or, or Test. So basically, what he did was he drained my right shoulder because it was ridiculous how 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 much pus and shit was in there. Gave me the antibiotic, and I said, "What about the left shoulder?" And he said, "Well, maybe the antibiotic will take care of that bump on its own. If it doesn't come back, we'll poke it." So I'm on antibiotics. I got three days left of antibiotics. The shoulders don't look completely normal, but they don't look like they did on stage. They look, yeah, they look pretty uh, uh, distorted right now. Still, I mean, uh, if I'm just looking, even with the t-shirt on, especially the right one, the right one looks like it's still sticking out a lot. You know, this is the one that's draining like constantly. Uh-huh. It's been draining since the show. Right. <laughs> it reminds me of Greg Valentino when he had that problem with the drainage problem. But let me ask you this question. Uh, a couple of people knew you were appearing on the show, and I got some pictures sent to me. Uh, one guy sent me a picture from April. It was, I don't know if it was from your Instagram, I think it was. And uh, I don't know, Johnny can put it up on the screen. Your shoulders look pretty distorted back in April, uh, Kenny. Is that the one in the elevator? Yeah. Yeah, that was bad lighting, man. <laughs> if you went on my Instagram to see my pictures from around that time, my, my shoulders are pretty round. My shoulders are freaky, man, straight up. Everybody thinks my shoulders are freaky. I've never put Sintol in there, and I, ha- I rarely, if any time, inject any type of testosterone or anything in them because they've always been dominant. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, uh, I talked to uh, the uh, Synthol expert in our industry, uh, Boston yeah. Lloyd, and Boston Lloyd is under the, uh, the belief that you have implants in your shoulders. Is that true? <laughs> Yeah, not really. Uh, <laughs> Boston Lloyd. Oh, no comment. Anyway, so I'm a body. I'm, I'm I'm a human being, right? And I'm a father first. I'm a musician second. I got a music company that pays the bills. I train people downtown privately. That's third and fourth. I'm a bodybuilder. It's something I do, and I'm good at. I'm not one of these guys with a fanny pack on walking around. And all he got is bodybuilding. I got a lot of shit going on in my life. And bodybuilding is just one little part that I'm good at. It's just one thing I'm good at. Right. And if Boston Lloyd wants to run his mouth about me using Sinta, best guy. You know what? I don't care if the people that don't know me think I use Synthol or not. Well, Boston Lloyd, right. doesn't, Boston Lloyd doesn't think you use Synthol. He thinks you have implants in your shoulders. Is, is, is there any truth to that? Well, you know, I don't know because I don't. I don't think that guy's IQ is very good. I'm educated. I don't think he's educated. You know, the difference between me and Boss Lloyd is I got 400 followers on Instagram. I got 300 Facebook friends, and I don't look to get followers. I have a life outside of the matrix that is social media. Yeah. And this fucking guy, he's all about social media. He's all about himself. Me, 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 me. Right? No, I don't have implants. No, I didn't, didn't use it though. I had two infections that were caused by water-based testosterone and winstrol. Um, I don't really want. I don't want to see me get worked up here because I shouldn't give a shit. But uh, yeah, it's that. Like, there's a lot of like people saying there's implants and this guy got horns put in his shoulders. I had to laugh about a lot of that. And, you know, these, some of these people have never stepped step foot inside of a gym. These people on, on online, they look like they they just ate hot dogs at some fuck or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, your, your conditioning was very good. It's obvious that you trained very hard for this show, and you you know you put your heart and soul into it. And it does suck when things like this sidetrack you. But do you think? Because I look, I've seen the industry. I know how you can get caught up in it. Do you think maybe you went too extreme? Sometimes you know we just go overboard. You know, you know, a little is good, and then too much, you know, ruins the cake, so to speak. Too many ingredients in there. Do you think maybe you, you should have you know pulled back a little bit at one point? Yeah, you know, last year I did really well. I did really well. I had a great physique, but I I, I felt like I, I, I kind of like um, took it too far with the diet. Like I was, I almost felt skinny at 225 on stage. I knew I was a much bigger athlete than that. So my goal this year was to come in the size that I'm supposed to be, the same condition. So I trained heavier. I, I got a powerlifting background, Dave, you know, deadlift, squats, bench, um, that, you know, like I, I got the bubble gut. I got a picture. I, I'll send it to you one time if my mom can find it. I'm 12 years old on a beach, and all you can see is a skinny chest, this big belly, and these huge legs. I was 12 years old. <laughs> so this bubble gut, I, I've always had the bubble gut. And, you know, uh, the big belly. But that picture that went viral, 
Like you even said it, Dave. That was just one of them shitty moments where I was yeah. either breathing out, you know what I mean? It's just an awkward position I was in. Obviously, I'm not doing a pose there. Right, right. And and this year with the gut, or whatever you want to call it, I had a little bit of a harder time controlling it because I was 20 pounds heavier. Right. No, I know. Look, I they've done that to me, too. I, and I've seen other bodybuilders, Marcus Haley, they've done it, too, uh, where they capture one moment in time that you know is, is a fleeting moment, and it's not net really a, an accurate picture of what was going on. Uh, what, what do you think is next for you? Do you think you need to come down in size a little bit? You want to get bigger? Uh, what's the next show do you think that you'll be setting your sights on? Obviously, Canadian Nationals is off the table right now because of the infections. What what would be next for Kenny O'Neill? Well, I'm going to take a couple of years, Dave, because the last two years, I I worked so hard at bodybuilding. You know, like I, I walked away from an oil job making ridiculous money. I walked away from a marriage that was failing and to pursue my dreams. You know what I mean? My dreams are to make money playing music. I'm a DJ. I'm a composer. I'm a producer. And to bodybuild, man, because when I was four years old, I looked at a magazine and I knew I wanted to look like Vince Taylor, you know, those guys, you know, um, from the 80s, 90s. And so I had this opportunity where I, from a failed marriage and, and, and a job that worked me to death, got away from both of that, to put two years of work. I think we uh, lost his audio there. We'll try to get it back. Um, look, you know, I think people have to understand that in bodybuilding, you know, people love to pick on people, you know, especially people that are exposed out there doing something that no one else is doing. And it's very easy to poke fun at other people, okay, when, when you're not getting up on stage or when you don't even look half as good as that person does. Obviously, Kenny O'Neill has put his life and heart and his soul into, into bodybuilding, and you got you to give him a break on that end. Uh, was it a bad decision to get on stage looking like that? Absolutely. Uh, is it dangerous to walk around with infections in your shoulders for three weeks without getting antibiotics? Absolutely. Stupid move. Very bad move. I hope he learned his lesson from this. Um, you know, does he have implants? Does he use synthol? That question only he knows and only he can answer. All the Boston Lloyds in the world can speculate whether it's an implant in there, whether he does inject other stuff in there. Uh, to me, it looks infected. Uh, I could definitely va validate the infection aspect of it. But from the pictures we saw earlier this year, before he even you know started using his, quote, water-based steroids, the shoulders were pretty damn full already, and they looked unnatural. That's the best look. You know, you could have massive shoulders, but if they don't look natural, they don't fit your body, more than likely, they're probably not, you know, natural. <laughs> okay, they're probably enhanced with something. Uh, Kenny, do we got you back now? I think so. I can right. hear you, but I can't see it. But uh, I can hear you. Okay. So just uh, you would. I don't know what you were saying. I, I kind of lost the train of thought. But I was pretty much just saying to the the public out there that you know you did put your heart and soul into it. You made a couple of poor decisions, and you shouldn't yeah. be crucified for the rest of your bodybuilding life because of that. Um, do you think that um, bodybuilders in general use too many drugs nowadays? <laughs> I think athletes, Daryl, Dave, uh, yeah, I'll say yes to that. Uh, you know, everywhere I go, uh, every gym I go to, people ask me what I'm on, what I'm taking, where do you get stuff and all this stuff, man. I'm just like, just kids, man, kids. I was 10 years in training before I touched anything, man. I was like taboo. I thought that shit was taboo back in the day. But in 2016, with the, with the, with the, the social media, the Internet, you know, the internet and social media, in my opinion, has ruined bodybuilding. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but yeah, everybody's on drugs, man. Bikini girls are taking GH. It's retarded what's going on these <laughs> days. But, uh, you know, people think more is better, I guess. Well, you know, you were pretty uh, you know, forthright with what you were taking before you were, you, you switched to the winstrel and, and, and test uh, suspension you were talking about. What was, it, what was a typical cycle like for you, you know, getting ready for this show? Uh, in Canada this past uh, weekend? Well, you know, like, for, for my gross, uh, for off-season cycles, like, probably, like, 60 weeks out into eight, I use 3,000 milligrams of testosterone. That's a lot. Uh, I don't really like to use too many different things. I'll use probably 600 milligrams of DECA. Um, I hate trend with passion, but I use I use it sometimes because it's so good for burning fat, and I use Prima Bolin. Prima Bolin's, like, my bread and butter, and I have about eight weeks out, I'll switch to propanate, and I'll do 1,500 milligrams of that a week. 
Um, I use between 800 and 1,000 milligrams of primobolin, and then um, a little Mastron P, and then um, Pro, Mass Pro. And then when I'm three weeks out, I like to just slowly eliminate the uh, probe and introduce the water, right? It introduce the water. But I'll bet this year I used probably two more mils per day than I did last year because it was so much bigger. I thought that my body would accept it. And, you know, it went again. My body was like, that's enough, man. You, you know, you're putting too much in there. How much GH? Uh, go ahead. How much growth hormone do you use? I was using 10 units, uh, was, I was using 5 units year round of uh, an underground lab, and then about 8 weeks out, went to 10 units, and then about 4 weeks out, I stayed with the 10 units and added in 4 units of uh, pharmaceutical grade. So 4 weeks out, I was using 14 IU. Wow. Yeah. That's a lot of GH. Do you think maybe that might have caused a little of the distension issues that you had? Because a lot of guys find that if they cut it back at the end, it tends to reduce the distension. Yeah, I mean, it is what it is. Last year, I went into the, I, I took GH right into the day to show, and I was dry like a dead bone, right? So, like, people say it makes you hold water and stuff. I know my body pretty good, and I knew I wasn't holding any water, so I kept it in. This year, I went for the hero. I, I went for the hero card, man. Like, you know, like, I was 243.7 on stage. I'm five nine and a half in condition. And I didn't really think about the additional mass, you know, gassing me a little bit easier on stage. Like, I usually pose with ease. I don't gas. I don't lose breath. This year I found it a little harder. Um, you know, me, yeah, I probably should have reduced the, uh, the GH closer. And I'm not, I don't think I'm going to use water-based products again after this. Yeah. I always tell people it's a, it's a crapshoot at best. You, you can do it 10 times and have a, not have a problem. And the one time you do have a problem, it's a disaster. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I've had this exact thing happen to me. What happened this, this year, David, was about two years ago. And it's the same thing. My shoulder got infected. It was only my left shoulder. And it, and it drained itself. I never even got uh, antibiotics. And three or four weeks later, it looked normal again. So the difference between that and now is, is that... <laughs> This time it blew up the day of the way in. I mean, like, what do you do, man? Like, it's just, it's just pure shitty luck. You know what I mean? People who know me, they respect me. I've got a lot. Okay, I haven't got one inbox message that was hateful. I got a million of them on wall posts, but not one inbox message that was hateful. I got a probably between fifty and a hundred really positive, upbeat uh, messages from people I don't know in the states, from people that I know really well, and you know what, man. I, f I fucked up, but I'm coming back, and I'm going to kick fucking ass. All right, here's your, I'm going to give you a chance now. Uh, I want you to give some advice to people, because I know there's a lot of guys watching out there, probably a lot of young, upcoming bodybuilders that want to be huge and freaky, and they want to make it to the Olympia stage. Give them a b little bit of advice, that you know, a lesson that you learn from this experience that maybe will help them avert a similar disaster in their careers. Yeah, I mean, don't, you know... My advice would be don't get too caught up in this social media game, man. This is where everything goes wrong. Everybody, you know, po posting selfies on the hour. Side, side chest at 4 o'clock, side chest at 5 o'clock. Don't get caught up in people uh, commenting on how cool you are. That's the first thing. And, you know, I, use, I, I was a bodybuilder for 10 years without using drugs. Drugs do not make the champion. There's a big pie, and drugs is one piece of the pie. Die. The food is another piece. Rest is another piece. Supplementation is another piece. So don't think that using more drugs is going to make you a champion. I didn't take that approach this year. I just went extreme on everything. I ate more food. I had way better rest. I took more drugs. You know what I'm saying? But if you're young, you don't need drugs, man. Unless you believe you're one day you'll be a pro bodybuilder, don't use drugs. Uh, I'll tell you a really quick story. In 1999, I had a chance to meet Dorian Yates in Thunder Bay, Ontario. And I was 19 years old. Everybody thought I was juicing, but I wasn't. I was three years away from juicing. That was three years before I did my first cycle. Dorian Yates looks at me. He goes, are you using steroids? And I said, no. He's like, are you going to compete in bodybuilding? And I was like, oh, I don't know. He's like, well, if you don't, don't use steroids because steroids are for bodybuilders. Pretty much. I mean, uh, so any kids in the gym just looking to get in shape, don't, don't, don't go there. If you think you got a future... In bodybuilding, 
and get some advice from somebody like me or Dave or somebody who's been in the game for years and not Boston Lloyd <laughs> or any guys like that. People who actually have an IQ and know their shit and, you know, eat lots of food, get lots of rest, and train heavy and train smart. I mean, that's all I get to say about that. Well, thank you, Kenny. I appreciate you being honest, coming on, addressing uh, the audience that has, you know, thrown so many aspersions at you and, and, and uh, negativities, and you, you faced it head on now. I think we put yeah. it out there. The story's out there. People know what happened, and it really doesn't matter what the truth is. It just matters that, you know, the, a lesson was learned. You're going to move on. Hopefully we'll see you in the pro ranks at some point. Good luck with yeah. your career, with your music, and with your, uh, I know you're a, a father. Yeah. I just want to say a quick shout-out to my little girl who I would die for right now, who's more important to me than any bodybuilding show or anything you could remotely compare to bodybuilding. Her name is Kennedy Lucille Loretta O'Neill. She's my six-year-old daughter. I would die for her in a second. I want to say a shout-out to my girl, MC. I love you. And my mom, Loretta, I love you too. And all my family and friends and people who know me, thanks for watching. And people who don't know me, hopefully you got a different opinion. Thanks for, thanks for having me, Dave. Appreciate it. All right, and that will take us to the end of another episode of Live With, brought to you by Species Nutrition. Visit speciesnutrition.com. I'm Dave Palumbo, and we'll see you tomorrow.